Hey y'all, I'm Crystal. Welcome back to my Texas garden. Well, it is just about dinner time and I thought I'd come out to the garden to pick some snow peas to go in our keto faux fried rice. But before we do that, I wanted to give you guys an update on the garden and to let you know that I am still battling the pill bugs. Now, if you're new around here, welcome. And if you're all about gardening naturally, well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to smash the bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new video. Now, let me give y'all a little tour around the garden. All right, we're gonna start with our peas. And oh my goodness, look at them. They're all uh, in between four foot and almost five foot tall. Look at them. They are so incredibly happy. I've got tons and tons of blooms and lots of peas. Now, check out the size of these leaves. They're as big as my hand. They're extremely happy plants and I am happy that the pill bugs don't like them. So right here is our red scarlet runner bean and it has managed to climb all the way up and past eight foot tall. Now I'm gonna treat it like my uh, long yard beans and tomorrow morning I'm gonna go and snip off the top. That way it'll put energy into letting some of the suckers grow out like this one right here. So one plant now has two vines going up. And y'all, I absolutely love, love the color of these blooms. So, so pretty. Uh, that is my lone standing purple potted bean right there. Looks like the chickens got in earlier and did some scratching. Luckily for me, the chickens have no idea that there's actually fruit on the pea plant. Um, I guess they can't see them. I don't know. So anyway, it looks like the chickens came in here earlier and scratched up. So I'll have to fix that in a minute. All right. So we've got some tomatoes right here. And this one has already got blooms can you see that hopefully you can i've got a couple of tomato plants here that i did go out and buy i am absolutely not ashamed to say that i bought starts after all of my starts were eaten by pill bugs today i'm going to start some more tomato seeds uh, i kind of waited to see if i could find some more starts that i liked different varieties but i just didn't so i'm going to start some more today uh, I know there's people that are gonna be watching this video that are from the same area as me and they're going to say, but it's too late. No, it's not, it is not too late. We're going to keep everything heavily mulched all summer long and it's gonna keep those roots nice and cool and the tomato plants will just keep producing all summer long. Now, all of these tomatoes that you see here are all indeterminate varieties. So they will just continue to grow, grow, grow all summer long. We've got some squash. Now the stuff on the ground is diatomaceous earth and we're gonna talk about that in one minute. Pill bugs took out this really nice sized plant. It was really nice sized, very, very sad. We have some more beans over here. And these right here are chick beans or, I'm sorry, chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Uh, I've never grown them before. Uh, this is how they grow. They grow kind of flat to the ground. Uh, they kind of look like ferns to me. This might be another one that you can probably grow in the front yard because seriously, doesn't that look like a nice sized fern right there? But it's a chickpea. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep watching this all summer long and see what its characteristics are like. See uh, its blooming habits. But yeah, it's a really pretty plant. Got some more beans over here and these are wax beans by the way and for some reason the uh, pill bugs stayed away from them over here we've got a lone standing couple of wax beans over here they're doing fabulous we also have one of three of our pea eggplants now I did not grow the pea eggplant from seeds. Uh, my mom dug them up last summer out of her friend's yard after I said, hey, I wanna grow that. Um, and I housed them inside my bathroom all winter long. But now we're finally blooming. So this is a new plant to me. 
Uh, I have no idea its characteristics or anything like that. So this is another one we're just going to have to uh, watch and see how it grows. This is another pea eggplant and for some reason um, it's kind of yellow. I think that it's lacking maybe in some nitrogen. It's also not blooming but it's being fed the same fertilizer uh, with as the other ones. So I'm not exactly too sure what's going on with this one. It's gotta be something within the plant. The plant is not able to um, absorb the nutrients from the soil properly. So I'll have to work on fixing this one. All right, so we've got our black cobra chili pepper right here. And here is one of its gorgeous chilies right here. Beautiful, beautiful chili beautiful plant. Oh man, I have got a ton of new peppers on here. Very, very exciting. This, <laughs> this is a funny story. I had not planned on moving the lemongrass out from the front porch so soon, but this lemongrass, every time I walked by, kept grabbing me, and I was really afraid that somebody would accidentally knock it off the porch or something like that, because it just kept grabbing everybody. So I moved it into the garden, and the poor thing looks so sad right now, but it will, uh, it'll green up a little bit better and spread out, and look, you've already, we've already got a baby coming up. And y'all seriously make a mental note of this um, lemongrass and that pepper right there and see the space apart. And by the end of the summer, I guarantee you will see minimal space here. All right, so we have some more squash. This is actually uh, a zucchini back here. We got more zucchini right here. And I wanted to show you guys, we have lots of plantain in the garden, lots of it. This is my seedling table. I am waiting to get the pill bugs somewhat under control so I can kind of plant out. Um, what we have here, we've got some kale right here. And as soon as I put the camera down, I will water these things. Um, we've got our Roma beans. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Um, I've already started uh, feeding them. And you can see we've got second sets of leaves coming in. Second set of leaves right there. All right, over here, I've got rosella. And this right here is a uh, Vietnamese coriander. It's actually not a coriander. I think it's in the mint family. I'll have to do a little bit more research, um, but it, it has a very coriander taste, cilantro taste. All right, so we've got some hoppy black dye sunflowers. And y'all, when I uh, was working with these seeds, I couldn't tell why they call them black dye. I mean, everything turned black, which was really, really cool. So we've got some corn flour back here and this is all choice some oh no I lied right here is um, lettuce leaf basil and it's coming in really really nicely we've got some lemon basil right here or as mama Lai would call it pakitu very very popular for fish dishes and we've got some burpless cucumbers right there some national pickling cucumbers right there I've got, I've got lime basil back there. I might, I might have a problem <laughs> with basil. I, I might overly like it. I do plant a lot of it and I do cook with it. Uh, we have a dark opal basil. Over here, we have got our sweet potatoes. Okay, so right here, we've got uh, Russian mammoth sunflowers. And then I have got uh, some dill right here, some more national pickling cucumbers right there, and right here, they're so cute, they're coming up, these are winged beans. And I'm gonna show you guys the winged beans this year so y'all can grow them next year, they're really, really cool, and they're really quite delicious to stir fry. They're actually a bean that you have to slice in order to stir fry it, very, very cool. So this one right here is like a jelly melon right here. All right, so we've got some zinnias over here. And I've got more zinnias on the porch. I have got more rosella right here. And the rosella, since I have so much of it, if you are local, I will be selling it in about a month. It grows really, really well here. It is a cousin to the okra and loves heat. This is a velvet queen sunflower right here. All right, let's skip to the porch real quick. 
All right, starting over here, I've got Giants of California Zinnia, and that's a mixed color. Then we've got a Mongolian Giant Sunflower. They look a little leggy, but, uh, you know, they're not. They look leggy, though, but they're not. I've got Borage. Y'all, I just love the little fuzzy leaves. They're so cute. All right, so I have got Thai Basil right there. And then right here, we've got more of the uh, lettuce leaf basil. More Thai basil right there. I've got more corn flour over here. More zinnias. I'm putting zinnias everywhere this year. I told y'all I wanted pretty, and I wasn't lying. Lots of zinnias, lots of different kinds of zinnias. Now, this entire tray of zinnias was 50 cents. We have got a spicy global basil right there, sweet basil right here, and then we have this one. It looks kind of like a daisy and a sunflower, and that's what it's called, white monarch of, of veld. Um, but they were really, really small seeds. I thought they were. I thought I was buying another sunflower, um, so I'm really, really curious about it. But look how cute their little fuzzy leaves are. All right, so we have um, some more cucumbers. And we've got some lupine right there. We've got large leaf basil right there. And a lot of this stuff is still kind of popping up. And holy green basil right here. We've got bee balm over here. And some French dwarf marigolds. And the marigold seeds that I have just didn't uh, germinate very well. I do have some more. They are quite old, and I did buy them on clearance at the Dollar General. So I'm gonna sow some more seeds and uh, see if we can't get any more marigolds. Got a lettuce mix going on right here. Finally, I can show y'all this because there's something to show y'all. This is the yellow dragon fruit that I ate, fell in love with the flavor, and decided to start some seeds. They're slowly and surely coming topside. I did see some more seeds germinated uh, last night, so I'll be planting those. And you can see right in here, it looks like nothing's going on, but there is one that's trying to germinate. This might take another week to two before it actually pops up uh, topside. But yeah, they're so cute. Now, dragon fruit is a cactus, and I'm super excited about it. We've got more Vietnamese coriander right here. This is stuff that I bought at the Vietnamese market and I rooted it in the house and planted it out here. And if you can look really closely, I put forks in here to keep the cats from sitting on, uh, on the plant. So there's several forks in here. And when I first planted it, you could see the forks and just a little bit of the uh, Vietnamese coriander. Now you can't see the forks at all and I think it's hilarious. All right, last on our seedling tour are these little seedlings that have just started popping up within the last 24 hours. These are Thai water morning glories. Um, we eat these, these are very, very edible. Uh, and that's really all I know about growing them. This is my first year growing them. Now, Mama Lai bought these seeds for me like five years ago, and I'm just now getting around to planting them. They are a heat loving green, so they don't mind the Texas summer heat. They also love water. So we're gonna be trying this one out for the first time this year as well. All right, so we are back in the garden and I wanna show you just a couple more things. These are the papaya seedlings that Mama Lai gave me and they're doing great. I did lose a couple, but that's okay. We still have a lot to play with here. Here is my kefir lime tree and it's doing beautifully. Every time you see purple, that's new growth. And that's new growth. And then over here is our Thai chilies. They're doing fabulous. Not too sure what's going on with the rest of my chili peppers, but the Thai chili peppers are doing fantastic. You're gonna have to st Oh, your big bull head. Your big bull head. Oh, okay. Can I finish making the video? Go see what the kitty cat's doing. Is daddy home? Go see, is daddy home? Go we'll see, did he come home yet? Go we'll see, did daddy go home? Where is he? Go we'll see. All right, 
I bought us a little bit of time. Two seconds. I bought us two seconds. All right, so I did my little pea harvest. I've got both, no, you can't have it. I have got both sugar snap peas and I have got snap peas. And a little snack in the garden before dinner. Never hurt anybody. Now, if you know me personally, you're gonna know that I am not fond of peas. I don't like them. And that's just plain and simple. I don't like them. However, I like them raw. I've discovered that. I like them in salads. I like them raw. I don't like them canned. I don't like them cooked, period. So none of these peas, except for my snow peas that I'm gonna put in my, um, my rice tonight. Or actually, it's cauliflower. These are so incredibly sweet. They really and truly are. I'm gonna make the perfect garden snack. And Duke's really upset because I won't give him any, but I've already tried to give him some and he just spits it out. So I'm not gonna waste it. Now these holes are too tough for me to chew. So I'll just toss them on the ground and um, they'll turn into compost. Snow pea. Really, really good. Not quite as sweet as my uh, sugar snap peas, but I guess that's why they call them sugar snap peas. You really want to bite? You're going to eat it? Here. You're not going to eat it. See, I told him he wasn't going to eat it. So we have an update on the peel bugs or the roly polies or the potato bugs, whatever you call them. They are still very much alive and well in my garden. The cinnamon essential oil works okay. Uh, it doesn't get rid of them completely and it's only good until the first rain or the first dew, until the first time it gets wet. So then you're constantly uh, constantly reapplying, constantly reapplying. So today when I came out to check on my plants this morning, I found a huge mess with my squash. The pill bugs have actually started attacking mature plants, which tells me that the population has gotten so big that they really do need to be taken down. I don't use pesticides in my garden and we're kind of seeing a problem with that now. But on the same time, I can come out here and snack in my garden and feel, feel confident that I'm not poisoning myself or poisoning my family or poisoning my animals um, from the food that I'm growing in my garden. Now, I have been experimenting with diatomaceous earth. I have put it down in my garden uh, to get rid of ants and it takes two or three applications and the fire ants were gone. Um, so that's good. Now, diatomaceous earth does kill the pill bugs. It doesn't do it fast enough. While they're in the process of dying, they're taking out my plants. I decided today we are gonna do a triple threat. We're gonna take this problem head on. Now this is all still a big experiment. Um, I won't know how great of a difference we're gonna make in the pill bug population in my garden right away, but I've gotta get it to a point where I feel confident putting new plants out here because as you see from my table, I have maybe another week to two maximum before I start putting out those bean plants. They can't stay in those cells forever. And the garden is just too big for me to take all of the hay up and bring in the ducks and let them eat the roly polies, the pill bugs. Uh, so we're gonna do a triple threat. We're going to repel, we're going to trap, and we're going to destroy. Let me show you the triple threat that we're going to be doing today. Thank you. 
So y'all see the pill bug infestation is still really, really bad. I have cut the lower leaves off of uh, this squash plant and I'll do the same with this one over here. This one is more compact than this one is. So it'll be a little bit trickier getting the, the leaves that have been eaten on out of there. What I've done is just laid the leaves out on the ground and just let, I'm just letting them eat them. I mean, uh, what am I going to do at this point? They've already destroyed the leaves. I've got another leaf over there and they're just all over it. And now I've got my spray. Now I have amended this spray and I've added peppermint oil in. So for every four ounces, I'm doing one drop of peppermint oil and one drop of cinnamon oil. And I'm going to see if that actually helps repel them off the plants. Now, from my understanding, the peppermint oil will actually help mask the smell of the uh, plant sending out the distress signals. What I'm hoping is that it will cover up the scent of uh, a sick plant and it'll keep bugs, not only the roly polies, but um, other bugs off of them as well. All right, so I've trimmed up this secondary plant and I've also sprayed it. Uh, I think I'm going to have to spray some more because I'm still seeing pill bug activity in there. This one, I'm not seeing any pill bug activity around the plant where I sprayed, but they have also are busy munching on a leaf over here. Now, these are beans that I started back on, uh, I think it was like April the 9th. I decided to put six bean seedlings into the ground right as they were getting their second set of leaves. Um, I kind of wanted to see what the pill bugs would do with the pill bugs attack. Uh, what would they do? And they didn't let me down. They attacked. I have a couple of them here that were eaten from ground level, as you can see right there. I actually caught the pill bugs in the act in case anybody's wondering, um, you know, if there's any other kind of bug. It, this is primarily pill bug damage. Uh, I'm not seeing any more bugs right now. I'm not even seeing snails, which is odd. Uh, but what they're doing is they're climbing up the plant and they take out the second set of leaves. Um, and they've done it to all of them. They've done it to all of them. So in my experience, when that happens, uh, the plants typically die. I guess in a way you can call these the sacrificial beans. But now hopefully we'll get the uh, roly poly, the pill bug, whatever you call these little monsters under control. So now I'm going to open up happy hour for these guys. So we're going to start by finding a spot and I'm moving back the hay. And I've got just a little plastic lid here. I think I'm going to have to make more of a hole for them to fall into. All right, the hole is dug. The uh, plastic lid is put in here. Yeah, a little dirt fell in, but I don't think the pill bugs are going to mine. And lastly, we're going to fill this up. Whoopsie. <laughs> that was bad pour. All right, the trap is set. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take to actually catch anything. Uh, we'll do a short update tomorrow and see what we've caught. I'm going to go set up another trap over by the beans. <laughs> so I filmed that this morning and I'm out here this evening. And I'm, I'm not seeing as much activity. Only on one little bean plant am I seeing some activity, but I'm going to go and spray it with some repellent and see if that helps the bean plant. The bean plant is gone. In my experience, when those first true leaves are removed, then the plant is pretty much done for. I am not going to pull them out of the ground yet. I still need their assistance. <laughs> I will admit, this is an extremely, extremely slow start to my garden. Normally, this time of year, these peas would have been gone. It has been that cool that these peas are thriving and things like tomatoes and squash are growing at a snail's pace. But I tell y'all that we can garden in the summer here in Southeast Texas as long as we keep everything in a heavy mulch. And I guess this year, I'm really gonna prove it to y'all, huh? To see more great gardening videos, go ahead and click right here and I'll meet y'all over there.